They actually met in August. El Machi won on points by 40 points to 36. So is he going to be able to take him out of there this time? Well, you know, Machi hits really hard, particularly off the left hand. Being a right-handed southpaw, can really deliver that left hand, both straight and, and by way of uppercut. Very flamboyant, very loose. Wants to knock out. Wants to look good doing it. Yep, he wants to make a statement. This fellow, oh, that's a good shot. Oh, two of them. Two really good left hands. Well, if he wanted to make a statement, he's made it in the space of the first minute of the fight. Well, he's already gone on record as saying he wanted to knock out, you know, in about four rounds, but he, at this rate, he may get it even sooner. Well, Spitko, we know, is strong. Game. But he doesn't want to be taking too many left hands like that. Spitko's going to find it hard, breaking down the southpaw style at the best of times. It's only when uh, El Machi really steps up in class that you'd see whether or not he has the ability to go on to another level. He's clearly in the comfort zone in this sort of fight. Yeah, El Machi looking to... El Machi, that is. Yeah. Already looking to plant that, that left hand. Actually steps in behind it, throws the jab, steps in right behind the left hand to get maximum power behind it. I noticed at one point in that last exchange, he was looking to his corner, El Machi, and uh, feigning to have a conversation as much as to put Spitko off so that he could uh, maybe drop his hands, lose concentration, and then throw a big shot. Have they have that against you in a fight, Duke? I suspect that silence suggests no. Interesting ploy. Thank God. Defend yourself at all times, as they say. He's a nightmare to fight El Machi. He really is. When you've got a loose-armed fighter, it's very hard to get past... They're, they're, well, they don't have a defence. Well, he cites Nazim Hamad as his hero, and you can see a bit of the uh, of the prince in the style that El Machi attempts to adopt. He's not been able to find the bombs to get Spitko out in the first round, but impressive nevertheless. Joe's been told in his corner, you just got to tuck your chin down and keep your gloves up and not get tagged by shots of that sort of power. seen too many uppercuts from El Machi yet in this contest. That's the one which did the damage against Drew Campbell. Oh, there's one in there. Goodness me. Last hands. Right on cue, John. Right on cue. The straight left followed by the uppercut, followed by the hook. Another left hand from El Machi. You feel it really is only a matter of time. Turned away to have a word with Matt Scriven in Spitco's corner, then. Spitco being told to tighten it up. You might be able to hear it on our effects microphone in the background. He certainly got to do that, and the crowd really love it. It's the El Machi supporters every time he tries to wind up with that big left hand. Well, that's just wrestled to the ground, that's no knockdown. How much he's just showing Spitko just how strong he is. As you said, just wrestled him to the floor. Psychological ploy. Six round of this one. No, 
a spit go wet at the storm. Well, the referee can't allow this to continue happening and really should be telling El Machi to tidy it up and not be doing that. Well, El has gone for the spectacular knockout. It hasn't quite worked. So it's time to revert back to plan B, get back behind his boxing, put his punches together, look to work for the openings. They certainly expended quite a lot of energy in those big attacks. He said he's just constantly looking for the big shot. Well, he's pulled him to the ground again. And once more, referee Jeff Hines does no more than just uh, mildly suggest that is not legal. It needs to be told, I think. Well, I'm actually not landing too cleanly right now. Go for the eye-catching knockout. That's, that's about right. Just needs to get to work. That was a nice shot, nice body shot. Nice variety there by El Machu. Looking to go to work now. Well, he's trying to take him out and pushing him away with the base of the glove and again referee Jeff Hines doesn't say anything to him I think if he's got a no-nonsense sort of left ref and he's pulled down again if he had a no-nonsense ref like uh, maybe Ian John Lewis or Richie Davis who's refereeing the main event later on he certainly wouldn't be allowing him to do that that's a great left hand though. he's out John he's out that's he's a really there. good punch he's out on his feet referees rightly stopped it that's a good decision